welcome to Jeremy's Retro Bar. I'm Jeremy and this is my Retro Bar. And this week, I'm gonna be taking over a new room of my house to build another display space to show off even more computers. But of course, first, we're gonna need to make ourselves a drink. So once again, we're on our stove because we're making another warm drink. And this one is Rum Chata Eggnog. We're gonna start off with our saucepan and we're gonna add five egg yolks and one third cup sugar and we're just gonna whisk those together. Then we're gonna add two cups of milk. We're gonna add one half teaspoon cinnamon. We're gonna add one quarter teaspoon nutmeg. And we're gonna add one teaspoon vanilla. Now we're gonna turn on our heat to medium low and we're gonna cook that for 10 minutes. So 10 minute timer is up. I'm gonna turn off the heat and remove it from the heat. Then I'm gonna add three quarters cup of heavy whipping cream. Then we're gonna add one cup of rum chata. We're gonna stir all of that together. I'm gonna refrigerate this until it's chilled and then we can drink it. Okay, so now that that's had time to chill, I'm just gonna rim the glass in this cinnamon sugar mix and we'll pour in our eggnog. We'll just sprinkle on a little bit of nutmeg and add a cinnamon stick as garnish. And there we have rum chata eggnog. Cheers. Oh man, that is, that tastes like candy. That's good and dangerous uh, if there's a lot of alcohol in there. But man, that's delicious. So as you can see around me, I've built a full basement, well not the full basement, but I've built the majority of my basement into displaying a lot of my computer collection. And I determined it's, it's, it's not enough. I need more room to display more of my computer collection. Now, uh, the front room of my house, which typically would be set up as a dining room in most people's houses, for the, the last, uh, I wanna say five years, I've had a display on the wall where it's every color of the original iMac G3, other than the, the original, original, the Bondi Blue, uh, which I have right up there. But all the 12 colors, the flavors of iMac are all displayed on the wall. And in front of it, I used to have some couches and I had a coffee table made out of the original five flavors of iMac all in the same order as the Yum poster, with a glass top on it just as, like as a coffee table. And it's fine, it was, it was an okay spot, but it was a room that was never really used. And so I've, for the longest time, wanted to set it up to kind of mirror more of what a dining room would look like, so to have a giant table in there, and to, of course, <laughs> fill that giant table with computers. Because I can always take those off if I need a dining room, but for the most part, I won't, and I will have another place to display my Macs. So that's what I'm doing in this episode. I am going to be building a table for less than $100 to display a bunch more computers in the front room of my house. So let's get started. For this project, we're gonna need six two by sixes that are eight foot long, which are $9.98 each totaling $59.28. And we're also gonna need seven one by fours, eight foot long, which are $5.27 each, totaling $36.89, giving us a grand total of $96.17 for this project. I'm gonna start by making the legs of the table. It's gonna be made out of the two by sixes. I want the legs to look really thick and sturdy, and so what I'm gonna do is glue the two by sixes together, giving us a board that's effectively a four by six. I only have enough clamps to do two at a time, so I'm gonna wait while these two dry, and then we can do the last one tomorrow. And through the magic of editing, we're back. We're just going to go ahead and glue these last two boards together, put the clamps on them, and let it sit for 24 hours. Mm -hmm. 
So in order to make these builder grade 2x6s look more appropriate for furniture, what I'm doing is trimming a quarter inch off of each side of this mono board. And what that's gonna do is give us a nice square edge and allow the board to look like it was made as one big piece of wood. Now with our boards made, let's cut everything to length. Each set of legs is going to be attached to each other, forming a sort of rectangle with a crossbar at the top and a crossbar at the bottom. To attach these crossbars, I'm using a Craig HD pocket hold jig, which allows me to use really big screws that will hold in these thicker boards. And now I'm just going to screw them all together. And there we have two very rectangle table legs. Oh cool, my favorite part. I mean least favorite part, sanding. It's a necessary evil because the difference between unsanded and sanded is night and day. The wood looks so much better once you sand it. Now we'll just have a quick painting time lapse and we can get out of here. Actually, this is the primer coat. My camera decided to be weird for the paint coat and I didn't actually have the footage, so. You get the idea, it's the same thing. Now we're on to building our box apron, which I just now learned the name of. I've been calling it the thing that connects the tabletop to the legs prior to this. I'm starting here by just cutting a few boards to length. Now I'm taking all the 1x4s and drilling all my pocket holes, which are going to be used to attach the tabletop to the box apron and the box apron to the legs. And now I can start assembling the box apron. I've gone ahead and roughly placed the legs where they're going to go. And now, me and my wife, who I've weaseled into helping me move this box apron into position, will bring it in here and set it on the legs. As you can see, I've gone ahead and painted the box apron outside with just a quick coat of a matte black paint that I had laying around. That's because when I did this for the basement tables, it was very hidden, but for this table, it is very visible, and so I wanted to make sure that it kind of masked that it was there. Now I'll go ahead and attach the box apron to the legs using some pocket hole screws. Alright, so for the tabletop, I'm actually cheating a little bit. I'm using four old IKEA desktops. They're made of a very thin board, and then they actually are filled with a kind of a cardboard mesh, so they can't hold a lot, which is why I built such a strong frame under them. 
Now, I already had these, so they did not contribute to the cost of the table, and I do plan on replacing these at a later date with something nicer, but for right now, this is going to do, and uh, it will at least hold the computers that it needs to hold. And now I'm just going to use pocket hole screws to attach the tabletops to the box apron. And that's it. I just had to add 10 Macintoshes to the top, and I would say this is complete. Well, here it is, all set up with 10 all-in-one Macintoshes. So it's turned out pretty good. One of the things that I really like is the light fixture and how that integrates into the whole thing. And I know that does put me over the $100 total that I spent on, on actually building the table, but not everybody's gonna need to build that. They're not done yet. I do have some shades to put over the lights but Ikea has the ones that I want on back order because of the shipping issues in, uh, in America right now. So hopefully in the next month or so, I'm gonna get that put in. Notice I haven't like gone in and tried to boot up and show all the computers and that's because a lot of these are in various states of, of needing repairs. I think most of them work but a lot of them I'm gonna have hard drives that I'm gonna swap out and other things like that. So that's gonna be future content for the channel. And I didn't wanna to try to cram all that in to this uh, vacation week of uh, between Christmas and New Year's and just drive myself crazy trying to repair a bunch of computers. So I'm gonna take my time with it and uh, get these all back up to speed. Anyway, I know <laughs> this is not something that most retro channels is gonna worry about, is uh, building the furniture to hold the retro collection, but I think it's a significant and important part of it because if you just have everything up on a shelf that you're not ever using, then kind of what's the point in having it? I think collections need to be on display and used and that's what I'm doing here with this. So hopefully it encourages someone out there to do the same thing or build something similar or build something on their own and just new and unique ways in getting our collections on display and in the hands of people who might come by and want to play these machines. So anyway, that's it for this episode. Thank you very much for watching and uh, I'll see you next time. <laughs>